Hello again, everybody. Andrea Majeski here with Dental Health Tutoring. I want to talk to you guys about what I did personally, how, how I passed my tests in dental hygiene school, in dental assisting school. Actually, I did the same thing in dental assisting school and dental hygiene. So whether you are a dental assisting student watching this or a dental hygiene student, I do hope that this helps you, but this is exactly what I did. Um, a little background in, um, info on me is that I took dental assisting first and then I took dental hygiene after that. So I did do both. I took restorative hygiene about three years um, ago and I actually did the same you know, tips, tricks for restorative hygiene as well. So I've been in school many, many times and I did get good marks. So I'm not just telling you this and I barely passed all of my classes. I did maintain an average of 92%. So that's pretty good, right? I think so. Um, and you can do it too. Also with me, I did have to work full time. Um, not full time, like every day, eight hours a day. But if I had a week off of school, I did work every day. Um, after school, I worked every night. I think I might have had a day off during the week, but some weeks were different too, and I did work on weekends, so I did have to work as well. And it's a lot easier finding time to study and manage your time and be organized if you don't work, but I did have to, so I did have to manage my time around that. The best things that helped me for all of my tests, exams, because once you're in school, you'll have tests, exams, projects, clinics, family time, work, other things. What I did was for every single test, I would study two weeks before. Not a day before, not two days before, but two weeks before. Sometimes you might not know you have a test that quick or sorry, that far in advance, but if you do, it really helps. So then that way you can study a little bit each day or each night leading up to it. Whereas if you were to study maybe two weeks before for that, or sorry, if you were to study two days before a test, you would probably have to study five hours a night for that test only. But what about the other tests? What about the other projects that you might have? So what, what worked for me was to study two weeks ahead of time. So I could say study one, one hour for that one test. And then the next hour, study another hour for another test. So if you're, if you're able to study two weeks ahead of time, you see how that would be a lot easier than having to study for five hours in one night for one test. Not only will you not be able to retain as much if you're doing like five hours a day for one test, you'll be mad at at yourself because you don't really have much of a life if you're in school and then having to study five hours for that one test because you have a test the next day and then think, oh yeah, shoot, what about the other two tests that I have in three days? I won't have time to study for those, so uh-oh, which one am I gonna pass? Which one am I gonna fail? And I heard that, <laughs> excuse me, and I heard that so often with my classmates was, well, I didn't have time to study for that test, so that's why I failed. It's like, that's not a very good excuse. Honestly, you guys, that's a horrible excuse. Yes, you will probably have three, three tests a week, like minimum, plus projects, plus assignments, plus clinic that you have to prep for, plus you have to work, plus you have life, you know, things that you have to do plus you just want to take it easy for one day you know so a lot will happen but that's what really really helped me another thing was to keep organized i had an agenda for only what was happening at school i had a big calendar where i would put down what class i had each day what time when my tests were coming up what day I would have down there what tests I plan to study for each day so that I was always, always organized. My work schedule was on the same calendar, you know, tests, assignments, just anything that I had to prep for, I would put it on the calendar, but also in my agenda, because if you're not at home, you don't have access to your calendar, right? So it just kind of helps to know what you plan to do. Another thing that I did was I would study on my lunch breaks. 
I would because I didn't mind that, you know, I mean, not every single lunch break. If, you know, my friends all wanted to go to McDonald's or something, then I would not study that lunch break. But for a lot of them, I did. Um, I study better alone. So I would literally sit alone and study. But that helped me because if I had to work that evening, I know that I would not be able to study as much that evening because I had to work, right? So I would get an hour or like 45 minutes done or even just a half an hour. So even take half of your lunch break to like socialize, that's allowed, eat, and then study for another half an hour. I'm pretty sure I studied though the whole lunch break for a lot of them, but this was also many years ago, so I could be wrong, but that really, really helped me. So I always felt like I was constantly learning. That's what helps you pass the tests. When you do have to work, study on your way to work. Now I didn't, I did have a car, but it was back in my hometown. Um, I took hygiene school in Toronto, so I would study on the subway. My work commute was about an hour, so I would study on the way to work. So that way I always felt that I was doing something. I'd be at, at um, work for about five to six hours. I would come home, you know, eat, um, study for about an hour, but that's it though, and then I would go to bed. But that was perfect for me because studying made me tired, so I was tired enough to go to bed. So it was perfect because I usually had the like, um, I can't remember now, like the five to like 10, 10 30 shifts. So by the time I got home, it was like 1130, depending on if I had, you know, school the next day, I would either study for an hour to make myself tired or just go to bed if I had school, because that would be late to go to bed if I had school, right? But I would at the very least be able to study on the subway on the way home. So that worked for me. So I tried to stay organized. I always studied two weeks beforehand, um, studied on the way to work. Um, those are actually the main things that I find not a lot of students do. Um, a lot of them will in, um, in, in email me and kind of ask like how to study and how to manage their time. Those are the best, easiest things to do first, okay? Those are the best, easiest things to do. I can't say that enough. But if I missed anything, let me know. If you guys have any other questions about that, let me know. I'm so happy to help because to be organized in your school program is the best thing that you can possibly do because if you pass, you move on. If you don't pass, you don't move on. You're mad. That's not good. Money wasted, right? So you want to pass your tests, exams, and assignments. If you guys need help, I do offer the Dental L student program full tutoring for dental hygiene and dental assisting students while you are in school. So if you haven't heard about that um, yet, have a look at the link on the bottom and um, sign up for that because you will have full access to me. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't yet because um, I do upload these, these um, videos often just to help everybody out. So thank you guys so much for watching and have a good weekend. I'll see you in the next one.